saying, dude. Time stamp that out for I'm sure, my man. What was your dream? I had dreamt that I was actually in a video game. Early morning cruising. Why did you do that? Why did I do what? Steve looks like he misses his sleeping bag. <laughs> All right, there's a piece of gum there's underneath. There's a piece of gum underneath there. Okay, okay, so, you know, fine. it makes me feel a little bit less good. Stevie Weeby in the house, my brother. Let's go. Did you just hear that? Hello? Quit while you're ahead. Zoom date gone wrong. You been on a Zoom date? Hey, hey, the second you did a Zoom date, that shit went wrong. <laughs> 2021, if you're not sucking dick, you're a fucking bigot, okay? So, hell yeah, that's right. First dude to get pegged. I, BDSM shit is interesting to me, because like, who's the first dude to get hit by a belt by his mom and be like, hold up, Cheryl, run it back. What the fuck? Pirates, Okay. pirates, and abortion so far. I mean, the best thing about being a pirate is it's the easiest abortion ever. <laughs> Let's go, next suggestion. Yeah! I'm going in, Moon Tower! The girls, are you guys still getting belly button rings? I don't know, I haven't fucked a whore lately. <laughs> <laughs> is this good improv? All right. Okay. Oof. How you feeling, brother? I feel good. That was one of the best trips I've ever been on, to be honest with you. Is it really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I got to see your comedy, your progression, the process you go through. It was cool, man. Well, you haven't seen me do an hour ever. No. Yeah. I, I haven't seen you in over 10 years, I think. Yeah. It's something like that. At like, least, I like, remember almost, you were yeah. just always nice to me when I was doing open mics, and you were always nice to me. And I, like I said, I saw the last set I saw you do was in the OR when Bob didn't show up. Yeah. And they go, all right, Jeremiah Watkins, to the stage. And I just remember you are like, really spontaneous. and I mean, it's similar to your style yeah. now, but and you're implementing... Just, like, kinda, less style, though. I know. I remember you are doing, like, music stuff. Mm. Yeah. But no, man, you've progressed a great deal. That's good. That's and the that goal. was cool to see. I was like, whoa, this is a different, I, you know, I don't remember. I mean, your crowd work is crazy. Thanks, buddy. Um, and we talked kind of extensively about it, but that's something that uh, not a lot of people do. Like, it's it's kind of like you're like. It's a kind of free flow mix with material and stuff like that. But you're rolling the dice, too. You're like, I'm yeah. just going to roll the dice. What, roll what, the what dice. was the analogy? The I like dice. the analogy that you used what about, do you mean? about the shark thing. Yeah, it's kind of like your style is like there's a pool and like like the shallow section is the comics that do like their proven material that they're like comfortable with. But you're the opposite. You're like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to swim in the deep section where the sharks are. And you just, you just, it's like you're gambling. Yeah. But it pays off. Yeah, when it works, it works. It's yeah. Like high risk, high reward kind of thing. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But we, what, what are the, some highlights? What did you enjoy this weekend? Man. I mean, that was crazy last night. Like, like what did you think about hitting the boardwalk? You know, uh, it was a blast hitting the boardwalk uh, yeah. last night. I, uh, this morning, we had to like kind of we st we kind of like started the morning just like jump start when i heard that you waking up this morning i had a i had a very bizarre dream it was like i've never had a dream like that too do you want to talk about it yeah like i was literally f i felt like i was in a video game like uh, I let's was cut to a clip <laughs> steve yeah what was your dream I had dreamt that I was actually in a video game. Like I was a character in a video game. I was like, it was like su a survival game. Yeah. And I was like, I had stealth mode and I had like, um, like a sniper rifle and a bow and arrow. And I was actually playing the part in a video game. I can't really explain it. It was scary. 
It felt real. What else is going on in the dream? Um, I was chased by like zombies and I had to jump down into like this beach area from like a cliff and I was on my belly button and I like I could change weapons and stuff. So I had like my bow and arrow, then I switched to a sniper rifle with like um like iron sight scope. It was real believable. And then I it was like so intense that I like just woke up because it was like too much. No. It was like Fallout mixed with Warzone mixed with Legend of Zelda mixed with uh, Red Dead Redemption. Like I was in this world, but as a video game, like in a video game. And how long did you, have you been awake from waking up from that dream? Probably an hour. So it kind of shook you? Yeah. All right. I think it has to do with Vegas, so like maybe the desert or something. <laughs> Good morning. Is there anything that you didn't say during that? Um, it was mostly, oh, there's a part where in the dream I didn't mention that because there's other characters in the game and I remember my objective is to like stealth kill them and I remember that this woman was cloaked like she was kind of like transparent but I was able to see this person like she was walking down the hallway yeah and I took out a dagger and like I I like took her out and like she vanished oh yeah it was really it was really bizarre you know how dreams don't really, they're not like chronological, they're like sporadic. Yeah, it's kind of what you can remember. Yeah, so, that. but I just remember it was just the whole, after that moment, I was like fighting for my life. Oof. Yeah. Uh, well, I've actually been holding on to a dream for a while. You, you have? Yeah, I, I recorded myself a while ago and uh, Let's cut to a clip of that. <laughs> okay, so I just had this dream that Steve and I were booked to do this giant theater in Los Angeles. Um, but I went to the comedy store shirt. I went to the comedy store first, but I was wearing a Laugh Factory T-shirt because it, the show was through the Laugh Factory. And it was like awkward that I was wearing the Laugh Factory shirt at the comedy store in front of Richie, the manager there. I was like, I got to show this theater. Because it was this theater that was on them. Um, it was on Hollywood Boulevard. I think where they, where they do the Oscars. At the Man's Chinese Theater, I think that's where the show was. So I'm watching the show, I, I get there early to see what the show's like, and I'm watching the show, and somebody says, Ryan Gosling's in the crowd. And then I look down, and in the front, like one of the front seats are like, um, Justin Timberlake, Ryan Gosling, Jessica Biel, and some other like celebrities and stuff like that. I was like, oh, cool. I can't wait to perform for them. <laughs> and um, I go back uh, because it's like getting close to approaching my set and um, my like car is gone or something like that. And now I'm like crunching, like in a time crunch for time. And I go outside and I go to put like my hand on something, uh, like I push a door and there's like poop or something like, all over it. And um, I have to go to a dumpster and there's a rag that's facing out that I have to just grab the rag and just like clean this muddy, gross stuff off my hand. And uh, the towel smelled like grease or something like that. I start running and I say, excuse me to a nice older woman as I'm running by her. And she, she goes, uh, your nose will take you far. <laughs> and, uh, and I go, oh, oh, really? And she goes, mine did. Uh, my whole career, I was known for my nose. And this was a woman that was like, I guess she had a bigger nose, but not like huge nose. And I go, yeah, the people n sometimes know that I have a big nose in, like, in the comedy scene. And then that was our exchange. And I kept running, I kept running and running. And then finally I get to the theater and I finally see Steve backstage and he's been like waiting for me. 
and they tell me I have 25 minutes to do. And Steve's like, just, you know, bring me out like at the end. Like, well, I, we only need to be on the, together for like the last like five minutes or so. So I was like, okay, I'll do like 15 or 15 to 18 minutes and then I'll bring you out. He's like, okay, cool. And then I need to pee. I go and uh, I see that they're doing a Galaxy Quest reunion <laughs> thing because uh, it's clearly like MTV Movie Awards esque. Like backstage, there's like costumes and all these things that are going on, all these moving parts. And uh, I go, I start to go to pee, and then they say, "Come to the stage, Jeremiah Watkins." And I'm like fumbling with my pants and stuff, and then. I hear over the intercom, reset, reset, like I missed my cue and I couldn't find the mic and I also couldn't find Steve. And uh, my dad was backstage for a moment, uh, like when I went to the bathroom, but when I went back to the bathroom, he was gone. And uh, and then uh, I think that's all I remember, the dream. I couldn't find my Steve. I couldn't, I couldn't find Steve like right before I went on. And I, and I finally was getting called to the stage and then I woke up. That's that. That's all I remember. Yeah, so I can barely remember that dream now, uh, but it's a little bit of a weird one. Um, we you... were prepping for a big show. That's what I remember for it. What? So was, yeah. What do you mean we? You and I. I was looking for you. I couldn't find you. What? Yeah. Like I was absent? <laughs> Oh no. I found you at moments and uh, Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was That's I was, kinda bizarre. I couldn't find my dad, it was a whole thing. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you couldn't find your dad? I wanted my dad to see the show and obviously it's from real life. Oh, you're working through that. Yeah. You know, and I brought that up this morning. That's something I want for you to I want something to happen with that. Like he needs to see he needs to see your act now. Yeah, he will. Like I, I think it's not the right time. I think it's when it when the time's right, it's gonna happen. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I feel like it's gonna happen. Yeah. So I, I can put this down because we have two hundred miles on city on fifty Yeah, you got can it. I put it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, take your, you know. Huh? Just relax. I'm gonna relax. Kick, kick yeah, I'm up, chilling. Relax. I'm chilling. You got the slides on. Yeah. Um. Going back to what we just experienced, like, what are your thoughts? What, what's your overall review on like the vibe of Vegas? You know, I think Vegas has a lot of Vegas can be a positive experience for a lot of people, but yeah, we, you know, we talked about this. You and I talk about energies and stuff a lot. Yeah, and I think that there's sometimes a darkness and a sadness that's like kind of wrapped up in like the. We're gonna have the night of our life. We're, we're gonna do everything. And like we're 90, gonna... 95 percent of the people are like on that tip. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure to have fun. Um, yeah, I'm a person who, if someone's pressuring me, applying pressure, like, like to do certain things or like be a certain way, I kind of feel the opposite. I'm like, oh, yeah. I kind of resist it naturally. That's kind of how I've always been with stuff. Right. Like kind of pushing against the norm. And then if you add alcohol in the mix, because I, this is a thing that I discovered last night when we, were, when we were on the boardwalk or whatever, the strip, is open alcohol drinking. Yeah. Because uh, I almost lost my sobriety. Yeah, that was... I, like, like legit almost lost my sobriety. And uh, we have a clip. Uh, we did a dance break on uh, right near the strip in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, or did that already happen? I guess that no, no, happened. no. Well, no, no. We're talking about it. Now. We're talking about it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, you've already seen the clip. Sorry, we're figuring out the. Yeah, yeah. The, so the cut to the dance, right? No, no. They've already seen. Oh, they seen it. The first episode. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. So we can talk about that. You yeah. Almost, this guy, that guy, almost. So we. So we'll show that little clip. The guy almost. Almost uh, four tequila down my throat. Pour, yeah. <laughs> I was literally just, I was in s such shock, like, the oh. The terror in your eyes that I saw. Well, I had to remove, physically remove myself. Of course. I was, like, panicked. I would have done the same thing. Because he was, he was a little bit more aggressive than, 
There was nobody home. He, his eyes were like there was dead. Nobody home behind the eyes. Like, hey, come here, oh, come here. It was a zombie. Yeah, situation. come here, come here. And that's another thing I noticed. It's like that, especially the nightlife. It's like debauchery, what? drunkenness. Um, it's just like, dude, when you and I got gas last night, and and it was almost three in the morning. Yeah, we go in there. And there's there are slot dudes, machines there are in the gas station. Slot machine in the and, gas that's, station. and then you said the zombies. You brought up the zombies. Zombie. Yeah. Just like on autopilot. Just like, like gamble, gamble. Yeah. gamble. And uh, so it's good that we got out of there. There was moments where like Steve and I were like, I think we should get out of here. I think yeah. we did our. I, for me, two days in Vegas is the perfect amount. Yeah. Anything more than that, you're kind of like gambling there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then we, you did something very special because you brought your saxophone. Oh yeah, but before before we did that on the strip. Um, what uh, happened after that? We went to Flippy. But we did. Uh, we woke up with a, a little bit of a song this morning. We did. We did. Uh, we now present to you Red Bull Morning. Red Bull Morning. <laughs> what are you it's a Red Bull kind it's of morning. It's a Red Bull Morning. When you wake up next to Stevie Weeby, it's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning. morning. It's a Red Bull morning. Sugar free. Sugar free is the kind I like in the morning. Here we go. Okay. It's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning and a little. Oh, oh yeah. Steve, how does that taste? Delicious. Oh, let's see here. Glow, 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 glow. Delicious. So good. It's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning. Red Bull morning. What are you doing? Putting my contacts. It's a Red Bull morning. 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 Scissor Brothers! It's okay, son. Daddy, where are you going to go to? Uh, well, Daddy has to go on the road to pay the bills and stuff. Bill, I, I love doing stand-up, but I also, you know, I gotta pay for, you know, air conditioning and different stuff like that around our place. You gotta bring the bacon. I gotta bring home the bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you going? Let him know. Well, I'm gonna be in San Diego on October 16th, okay? San Diego, California, and then I'll be in Dania Beach, Florida. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you okay? Tell me upset yeah. a little bit. Dania Beach, Florida, October 28th through 30th. And then I'll be in Oxnard, California on Friday, November 12th. And then St. Louis on November 13th. I'll be headlining a show there. And then there's a live Scissor Bros as well. Do you know that podcast? No, Daddy. Oh, well, I'll, have to, I'll have to have you watch it sometime with me. Okay. And then December 2nd through 4th, I'm in Batavia, Illinois. Oh, you have such an upset stomach. It's okay. I need some formula. Oh, we'll, we'll get you some formula. It's okay. Well, let's get into this episode of Scissor Bros while I take care of my illegitimate child. <laughs> no, don't play with scissors. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Um, oh, dude, I want to thank you for this because what? you actually um, helped me with my merch this weekend. And that's I really thought, nice you know, you. I just want to be of service. I knew I was along for the ride. You called yourself. Do you remember that one night? You're just like, you, you said, oh, Dr. Jones, I'll just be over here with with your merch. You said yeah, that. you know, I was. I wanted to be of service. I'm there. Oh, I knew we were getting nice. contact. I was like, okay. And um, he helped me out, but, it was, but what was cool is people wanted to see Steve because obviously we're Scissor Brothers and people yeah, are and they were screaming it. I was trying to avoid it just kind of being the cut. They were literally screaming like, get Steve on stage. Yeah, and, and I'm literally show, just sitting at the merch booth like just in my mind I'm like, no, no, I'm just chilling. After but every show people every were like show, coming up to Steve taking pictures. Did you like that? I did, but it was like I haven't, I didn't know like that one time I didn't know what to do, like, because you were just staring at me on stage, like, 
And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I just said, get set. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. And then 10 scissors and I'm out. Yeah. But um, the, that last show, because I was just, I was chilling in the green room and then I heard, uh, they had the door cracked in the green room and I heard commotion. Like, get Steve up here. Oh, dude, people were yelling, like, because I was about to close my set and they're like, Please get Steve. Please yeah. get up here. And so I'm like, all right, you want? And in my mind, this is what I was thinking. All right, you want me up there? He goes, oh, you want me up there? All right, you want me up there? And I'm like, oh, you're gonna pay? Because <laughs> I go, I remember, I was on the side of the stage. You go, and I said, you want some scissors, huh? Because people were screaming, they wanted scissors specifically. Yeah, but they didn't know they were gonna get a hundred. Oh, they got a hundred. <laughs> they got a hundred scissors. It, it's scissor time, I baby. Was, Stevie Weeby in the house, my brother. Let's go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Scissor long, sir. Twelve, yes. Thirteen. Four, scissor with us. Seventeen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-two. You better be doing it! Scissor along with us even if you don't know what it is! 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, you better sit in that sack! 47, 48, 49, please get away from me! of like um, Man on the Moon, Andy Kaufman, stuff like that. And I know a thing that him and uh, his partner did, they, they'd mess with the crowd. Yeah. So the, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, I'm going to flip it like that. I know. It's funny that you brought that up. Why? That's one of my favorite movies, by the way. Did you know that I have performed with Tony Clifton before? No. Yes. With Bob Zamuda. I performed with Tony Clifton. No. Yes. I never told you this. You never told me I that. I can't believe I haven't told you this. I'm a fan, dude. I love, I mean, me too. A lot of the stuff we do is derivative from that. I don't want to mention all the characters we do. I only have right. like two, but right. well, how did this come about? So Holy smokes. It was a pretty cool thing because uh, years ago when uh, Big J Overson, shout out to our buddy Big J Overson. Yeah. He had a show that was on CISO that was called... What's CISO? Uh, it's this uh, network from NBC that uh, was a streaming platform that no longer exists. So it was like kind of a flash in the pan streaming network. Yeah. Uh, he had uh, this show called What's Your Effing Deal? Right? And it's basically a crowd work show. Yeah. So which during... You, which you have a great interest in. Oh, sure. And, yeah. and so I performed on that. Yeah. Uh, I was... Uh, we. We got asked to do it. Uh, it was like one of uh, one of an, or one of my earlier credits that I was really proud of. Yeah, because like, it was Big J. I love him. Like I, everybody respects him and loves what he does. Yeah, and he asked me, Josh Adam Myers and Avery Pearson, to do. Um, we had we had this group for years called Midnight Snack. Yeah, that was a musical crowd work group. 
that we would go up. Oh, that's so cool. We would riff with the crowd. Yeah. I would play sax. I would be on the mic. I literally had a sax. I had a mic. Yeah. I would talk and riff while Josh Adam Myers uh, would riff and sing, and Avery Pearson was on keys playing. Right, right, right. So it was this really fun act that we did for years. Uh, and he asked us to do it and be a part of that in a taping in New York. So we're doing this TV taping in New York. Yeah. And while we're there, we get a call um, saying that Tony Clifton needs a band for his set appearance. What? I got to be in the band for Tony Clifton's set for this How taping. How close were you to him? Dude, he, I talked to him on the phone. We literally... He, he, it was really Tony Clifton. Oh, he was a character the whole time. How you guys doing? This is how we're gonna do it. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you. Like, oh, that's amazing, dude. Wow. So, we're doing the taping, and if you're not familiar with his style, he's purposely offensive. That's literally yeah, yeah, what yeah, his yeah, act yeah. is. Right, right, he's right. He's trying to rile the energy up of the crowd and stuff like that. And for people who aren't familiar with him, they, they, it's not PC at all. It's no, it's over the it's, top. It's, anti, it's offensive. It's anti PC, over the top, offensive on purpose. Yeah. So, dude, he's doing jokes with the N word in it. What? Yeah. And it's bombing because people don't really. It's a different era kind of thing. Yeah. Like, it's these. Hip, he's still stuck in the seventies. It's these hipsters from Brooklyn. They're like, Holy oh my smokes. god, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So they don't, they don't get like that. It's purposely it's an overtly act. It's an, an act. It's an act. Over top. It's yeah. an act. It's an act. So basically, he's taking in work all this stuff while while he's like what? looking at us and like we're his band and dude we're three white. It's four white guys on stage essentially oh, with him no. and I'm just like on my sax. I'm like. Uh, so that make you feel uncomfortable? Dude, I was so uncomfortable. But you had to have known it's just it's an act that he's in this character. I know, but 70s. it was like it's funny like like it's looking back like because I'm like, uh, uh, what do we do here? Yeah. Like I'm like we're riffing with him a little bit and it's like it's just like a crazy experience. Is that documented? Yeah, um I don't know where it lives now. Oh, yeah. it'd be great uh, just to check. I just want to witness that. I've got pictures if I can try to pull them up. Yeah. I'll try to add them in the episode if I can find them, but it'll right. be a little bit of a deep dive for me. Now, did you spend any time in the green room or backstage? Just or a little bit of time. And he just stayed in character the entire time. We're going to have a good show. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. That's insane. You never Bam. told me that. Yeah. yeah. What'd you think about the, the movie itself? Well, you know, we, we both share a love for Jim Carrey and especially Man on the Moon. And I'm Tom. glad you brought up Jim Carrey because, man, that dude is just, he is the, he's awesome. Man. Knees, knees. Do you know, do you know he's, he paints and stuff too? Yeah, we talked about that on one of the episodes. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I didn't know. No, no, it's all good. But yeah. no, no, like going, if we did have a dream guest five oh, years, five there. years from now, oh, he'd be up would there he be sure. in there? Of course. He'd be in the chamber. That's, sure. that's like episode 1,000. If we make it new. That's like 20 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, it's I had, crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, I, I, I forgot that I never told you, and I know that you're a big yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. I like, I like the movies I like, I just, I can watch over and over and over and over again. Yeah, oh, of course. Like Rambo First Blood. I can yeah. watch it every day, every day. Die Hard, every day, every day. Doom. Well, man. what I like about Jim Carrey, his story and stuff like that, is like, his dad like kind of pushed him to, to, to do comedy and stuff like that because yeah. his dad was a performer and so they their stories of them like you know sleeping in cars together like to go to open mics and like comedy competitions and stuff like that so he was living out of his car uh at certain moments i think uh in his career yeah and you know because you always have to start from humble beginnings and that kind of reminds me of what's going on with you know with us right now with uh with you the roadway that- in Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Because I, I'm going to be honest. I, I Look, I, I'm not a prima donna or nothing. I would have stayed at Motel we're not, 6. We're, we're not prima donnas. We're not post donnas. It doesn't matter. Holiday Inn. I, I don't care. As right. long as there's a roof and a bed and a shower and soap, I'm good. So, just to be completely <sighs> transparent with uh, this hotel that we stayed in. Uh, there was character, man. There's, they had some character. Uh, basically... At this hotel, uh, I was allotted a travel allowance. Um, I, at my level of headlining, I get uh, kind of a small amount of money allotted for uh, my flight 
and some of my, my travel. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, it was a certain amount that I was like, oh, well, we're driving and going to a hotel. Like, I kind of, I can't get a crazy good room. Like, all That's strip. fine, bro. I wasn't judging. I was happy just to be there so with you. I got a, a room for Steve and I yeah. that was two queen beds in. It was 10, 15 minutes from the strip. But yeah. It was, um, it was in the cut. It was in the cut a little bit. Uh, it, it was slightly shady. Um, and it, it was shady because... There was some weird mojo in there. It's a little bit of weird mojo. And, can I um, tell what? Can I take over now and tell them what I noticed the very first thing you did when you went in the room? Think yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. So the very first thing you did when you walked in the room is you frantically check the mattress like you're working for like ortho insecticide repellent like a company and you're like you're frantically hold up you're check every crevice every corner of the mattress for you, bed bugs and I thought that was interesting. I got it. I was witnessing. I got bed bugs one time in Vegas, and it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Can and you, I, you want to talk about it? No. Uh, <laughs> I really don't. And so that's why I was checking all the stuff, because I don't want to bring them home. I brought them home to my wife once, and I Dude, don't want to do that again. you look like Doc from, like, Back to the Future. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, you were you losing your mind. Yeah. And I was like. Let's get to look though. Yeah, you filmed me doing that. Oh, I don't remember. Didn't we? I don't know if we do. Jeremiah, what the hell are you doing over there? I'm checking for bed bugs real quick. Why are you checking for bed bugs? Because I'm paranoid. I got them once in Vegas. Yeah. And I know what to look for. Okay. And, and luckily, this place is clean and I have It's clean. You it's feel clean. good? Yeah, I feel better. Okay. I'm going to check all the corners. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to check all the corners. Okay, okay, how is it looking? All right, there's a piece of gum there's underneath. There's a piece of gum underneath there. Okay, okay so, that's you know, fine. it makes me feel a little bit less good. Okay, because there's some um, gum. But it's got these kind of. Uh, it's got zips. a protector, a yeah, mattress protector. It's got, it's bed bug proof. Okay. And, um, and we needed to get you a power nap, right, before your show. Yep, yes, okay. we do. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. I got to check this stuff. Okay, quick. Jeremiah's checking. Hey, but hey, at least we could. There's a jacuzzi later. Is there a jacuzzi? Yeah, look at it. Heck yeah. There you go. I'm just gonna check your bed though. No, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> no, no. Oh yeah, you were good. We're good. We're good. We're this is a clean place. Okay. Is, but I just get paranoid. Okay. Keep talking about the roadway. Anyway, so, so the roadway so in. Before Steve and I left the hotel this morning, there was some things that we looked at that we noticed, um, and we're gonna show you some of uh, the things that we noticed around the room. Yeah. What did you say? I said, "Is this blood? Because we saw blood outside on that door." Oh no. Is that blood or ketchup? Hey, look, I don't know. I think we. I just got scared. Isn't that scary? I think we gotta get out of Vegas. What? Who's that? Did you hear that? Hello? Hello, hello? <laughs> Scissor Brothers! Hi, I, I'm Gee. It is I. Nice to meet you. I heard about you. The sheath snake is finally meeting the sheath hedgehog. And you, she snake, we both wear underwear. Look, down here. Yes, I'm wearing my favorite. Me too. Sheath underwear. Look, ah. two different compartments. Feel mine. It's feeling very good. Yes. <laughs> you, me, same, <sighs> we, exact same material. Two compartments. <laughs> here, here. Yes, there's one for your sneeze. Your sheath snake penis, as well as your compartment for your sheath snake balls or your hedgehog penis and hedgehog balls. And good, good material. 
Gray Madeira <laughs> is a Motown blend. Feel my again. <laughs> Go to sheetunderwear.com slash scissorboard. Use brothers. promo code scissorbros to get 20% off your, your first order. order. Today. Every sheath order comes with a 100% money, money back, back guarantee. Get sheath underwear today and let them support. Your boss! <laughs> Robert Patton invented these. And he is a war hero who fought in Iraq. And that is where he met me originally. And on another tour, he met the sheet they talk. <laughs> They're so comfortable. Sheetunderwear.com slash scissor bros for 20 percent of your order today. The ladies love them as well. Uh, Steve, what are you cutting? Oh, I'm cutting the, the plants outside. Oh. With these new pair, pair of scissors. Oh. I didn't even know that you did stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't want to share my, uh, you know, my interests outside of the podcast, but this, this is something I do to really calm my, to calm my mind and nerves. You know what one of my other interests are? Our Patreon. Oh yeah, what is what exactly is Patreon? Is that some kind of uh, music app? No, it's basically like if you like what we're doing on this podcast and you want to help contribute to us in a different way, yeah, then people can like like subscribe to us on Patreon and, and like they donate a little bit and then they get like vlog content and wow. Warzone content and PO Box stuff. So and, it's like and an private inside, Zoom session. It's like an ins- having an inside scoop. It's like an inside clubhouse. Wow, I happened to find another pair of scissors. Do you want to help me uh, cut cut some grass? I would love that. So, can I ask you one last question? Of course. Where can people actually go to join? Patreon.com slash scissor bros. Say it one more time. Patreon.com slash scissor bros. Join today and tell a friend. And look, there's a scissor sibling hat right there. And I got a Gerald shirt on that is available in our merch store in the link below. Or you can go to jeremiahwatkins.com and click on the merch tab. And that's the Scissor Bros stuff. We love you guys. Now let's get back into this episode of Scissor Brothers. Brothers. Scissor Brothers. Scissor Brothers. Also things we noticed outside the room. There's there's some stuff, um, well, okay, so originally we thought that like on the curtains that there was blood splatter in the door next to us. It looked like blood and it I noticed blood that. At night. Didn't I say something like but that? But then during the day. This morning. This morning. What did you, what did you see? The, it was like the shining with whoever was outside that door tried to enter the, through the front door with a knife. Let's go to a clip. <laughs> Further inspection. It's not a blood stain. It's knives. It's knives. Like, like the shining. Okay, we gotta get her. Alright, let's get out. It was scary. There's this, you know, but it had charm. But you know, I'm a good sense of energy and everything. There's definitely some seedy nights that happened in that hotel. There definitely was. Definitely. And, and I'll and I'll tell you what. Soiled rug. You know what? Should we pull up? Um, on on the phone, people were roasting the room. What do you mean? People were roasting that that room in the comments of that picture that I posted of you and you I. You documented that on Instagram. The comments. Oh for yeah, that picture. yeah. We should throw up the picture and read some of the Instagram comments. Okay. They were roasting this room so hard because I took this picture that we'll put on screen right now of uh, me shirtless um, and Steve in the background checking his text messages. And what does the caption say? Come see me in Vegas tonight and tomorrow. 
just hooked up with a strange Asian man. Use promo code FREEBIE for free tickets. Want me to go down some of the comments? Yes, sir. Just the ones that are roasting like the room and us. They're like, they're pretty funny. Did you guys just get done scissoring or what? He looks soft. Hold up. Steve looks like he misses his sleeping bag. <laughs> Some real scissoring went on last night, eh? Who came first? Do not let him con you into sucking his toes again. Bobby Lee looks great. Did Steve bring his sleeping bag? Finally a sweet picture with your wife. <sighs> Terrifying realities of the business. <sighs> when the Uber Eats driver says, Yo, you my last stop, cool if I kick it? <laughs> Did he lick your whispering eye? Oh boy. There's a lot of war zone comments. That there. room looks sketchy. Laughing emoji. Okay, this is, I don't know how I feel about this one. Part two, question. Did Stevie bring those curtains with him? And is Bobby stapling beach towels over his window at this very moment? It's the honeydew, y'all. <laughs> Bet you that room smells like cabbage and oyster sauce. Some good ones. Anyway. I just don't like the way... Because I didn't know you are taking a picture of me. And the way I'm like... That was you in your natural pose. And that's, I, 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 I have a problem with that. I did not. I have a problem with me doing, like... Oh, so you did... Because I'm scissoring the... I look like a Cabbage Patch Kid. Like you, an Asian Cabbage Patch Kid. Like, you don't realize that you that you position yourself like that? I, no. Well, people like to. <laughs> a lot. Dude, that was a great trip, bro. Dude, this morning, you know, we've been... We've been going... We, like, we've been trying to do, like, as much, like filming little clips for you guys like so you're kind of like along we drive got with a us. lot we got a lot and uh one thing that i really enjoyed and it was just momentarily this morning but what i really liked our little skate session that we did this morning yeah we we're just cruising I know, and you got I a good little it. uh board stall revert on that red curb let's go to a club It's early, dude. It's nothing but rocks. Nothing but rocks. Yeah. Early morning cruising. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Here. Want me to get oh, you? Oh, yeah. Two shadows. Two scissor shadows. Go back. There you go. on the red curb. Yeah? Yeah, do oh, one yeah. on the red
this is the longest me and you have stayed in like a room for like 24 7 365. 24 7 365. 7 365. We get along pretty well. You know what? Honestly, not even blowing smoke. Be, be real, think about it. Oh, I've be thought real, about it. Be real about I've it. I've thought about it. Yeah. I've digested it. And yeah. This is what it is. How well we got together on the road this weekend gave me a lot of hope for the future. As far as, wait, I'm thinking of a great word. Compatibility. Yes, because here's the thing. Compatibility. Because here's the thing. We're both... So, I have my own little quirks too. I know, but because let me tell you something, so brother. Nice. I haven't masturbated in three days, brother. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> We're both so nice that, like, if it didn't go well this weekend, we just kind of would have kept it to ourselves. We would have been like, "What do you mean well? What do you mean by that?" If, if we weren't that compatible, we would have been like, "To our kind of ourselves." Two, two peas in a pod. Oh, we are two. Two pod, peas my in a pod, like, no joke. There's like no joke. We could care less if we are filming each other at the weirdest times. It does, we think it's funny. Can I can I tell you something? The the main thing I notice about you, because I haven't been around you that like that, as far as just sleeping. Because it takes me hours. Which, I gotta pop my Unisom. Which blew me away that it takes you that long to fall asleep. But with you five minutes I know five minutes and this guy is out for the count like a light won't hear anything once I'm asleep I sleep deep and this is going back to your multi-functioning overly ambitious like checklist boom did this do, do, do this do this do this yeah you are on like crazy like motivational mode brother like me, I'm built different. I get my things done. And you know, but with you, you get your things done, but you're thinking about 20 other things you need to be doing. Well, so by the time my brain shuts down, I'm out. I'm like literally, it's like a computer like shutting and off. And that boggles my brain. Cause dude, I pee like, I pee a lot at night, especially before I go to bed. I have like this thing where I just, I pee. And you didn't. That's a unique thing to you. Yeah, and you don't even. I pee. I pee too. Yeah, you pee too, but you didn't even. It didn't phase you. No, the noise and stuff like that. Doesn't phase you. You make some morning noises. I've noticed. What, what are you talking? Wait, hold up. Let's talk this out. We didn't. We didn't talk about what you talking about. I know. What do you mean by that? You make some morning noises. This morning, for example, you woke me up this morning. Because uh, I was already in the area because I really need to pee. You know when you really need to pee and it wakes you up? Yeah. So you went pee and then I heard you go, ah, ah, ah. No. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you're doing like a uh, throat clear or something, but you, you do that early in the morning where you go, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never noticed that because I live by myself. Of course. Yeah. yeah. How would you notice that? I think it's just like a, a big quick release of air. I think that's what it is. Like yeah. Going, ah, ah, ah. It's like almost like a quick yawn, like you're like not letting your go your full yawn out. Like you're just getting it out all at once. All right, that's fair. Yeah. So that Can kinda, I tell you something I noticed about you too? I would love it. I would love it. So when I noticed when you were urinating, it was it sounded like someone took a gallon of water <laughs> and just poured it into like a pool. <laughs> like, dude, it was deep. My stream is it hard is and fast. Deep. Hard and fast stream. Yeah. Yeah. What else? What else did you notice about each other? Well, you know, a lot about each other. You know, when you're sharing a room, you have to uh, sometimes give the other person a heads up about when the restroom is being used. Oh, brother. And I'll tell you what. Uh, I might have jumped ahead of Steve in the line. He had told me that. He, more than once that he uh, needed to poop and and uh, I got kind of scared and I it wasn't the best scissor brother thing to do but I kind of cut the line and I, I ran for the bathroom and he got in there before him and he blocked me man let's get to a clip what hey what what are you doing I'm pooping I, I, I had to take a shit what do you mean dude I you knew I had to go 
Dude, please let me go. I don't want to smell your beer. Well, I don't want to smell your poo. I got to do this right now. Dude, that's not fair, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? Dude, fair? that's so wrong. What? Because I, I had to go poo. <laughs> Oh, dude, that's some lowball shit. I had to get it out before you did. Dude, dude, I don't want to smell your poo. I don't want to smell it either. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. <laughs> Why did you do that? Why did you do that? What do you mean? Why did you do that? Why did I do what? You went poo before I did when I that was my idea. What do you mean? You you took my idea. <laughs> For what? I you knew I had to go shit too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I have to go in there and smell your poo. <laughs> Meanwhile, right before I went to go poop, you said that it was about to smell like a North Korean internment camp. <laughs> Alright. So I cut uh, so, cut. So I, so I ran in there and cut. I ran in there and did I my know, business. That was I didn't that, want to smell like you're, and dirty, you're a dirty little out. devil. Cut. You did that, but then you also caught you caught me off guard. Oh. Because I had to I had to dump too. Oh yeah. I might have I might have checked in on you a little bit. How's it going in there? Huh? How's it going in there? I'm okay. okay, okay, okay. Huh? Yeah, well, what? It's, it's my turn. I know it's your turn. Yeah. Yeah, you and made a big. What asked you me. made a big deal out of me going ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't smell. I thought it would smell, and now it's my turn. Any other questions? Is it gonna smell horrible in there? Yeah. I need to shower in there soon. Well, I'm sorry, man. This is what you get for 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 for, for hopping over. The steam turn. is gonna make it. Ah! my face <laughs> I didn't mind it one bit but you love I love poo content I man. know you do and the fact if we could do poo content every episode the fact that we are even it putting brings a smile on my face so my man. I'm throwing you a bone here brother because you you want to do it every episode we're gonna episode. do poo dude it's going down but, either episode but, 100 but or listen, 1000 but listen. corn corn in the poo we threw all that we threw this in there because you know it, it is what happened and we put stuff what happened and you know i'm looking out for you brother because you you ask all the time and, and, and i'm like i always deny why don't you like flow. why don't you like it like i said before i'll say it again people eat watching this show and it's not the oh, best it's not good for the families and the kids yeah all right fair enough but it's funny sometimes yeah i'll meet you halfway what about farts? Over? Yes. In the future. I mean, we accidentally fart on the show all the time. But there's probably a clip that I accidentally farted in, in in this episode even. Speaking of farts, you mentioned something that my brother used to do on stage in his comedy act where he stuck he would stick a microphone in his butthole and just and fart on stage. Freely fart. Oh dude. What yeah. is it about that? What do you mean, what is it about that? Well, it's something, because, like, he's my brother, like, he's my blood. Maybe it's something that... Genetically? Because you know what he did to, that really offended me, dude? What? When he was on my show? So, I, I was thinking, okay, we've grown from certain things. He's about to turn 50. I'm in my 40s. You know, and I thought everything was cool. But, like, a couple minutes in, out of nowhere... He took the mic, put it in his butt, and farted, and immediately stuck it in my nose. And it smelled like shit. <laughs> That's just him being a brother still, my friend. What do you mean? That's never going to end. You got, uh, Yeah, like, but don't, you would think he's going to do that when he's 80? Oh, yeah. Wow. If I, if I know Bobby, he's going to do that till Let me ask you something. The day he leaves us. <laughs> Do any of your siblings do sh stuff like that? Yeah, it's like, I mean, my brother, um, one time on my birthday, he punched me in the balls on my birthday, and uh, he started dying laughing, and he sprinkled $20 over me and said, happy birthday, and ran away. He, that's how he gave me money on my birthday, was hitting me in the nuts, sprinkling money over me, and then running away, rather than just a card. <gasps> <laughs> Do you know what my brother did when we were younger? What? So that's one level, farting on something and then transferring the fart onto like a microphone or yeah. something. 
but I remember when we were kids, he would bully me where he would get butt naked, spread his cheeks and go, come here, dude, now. And then I go, no, no, Bob, no. And he would like, no, stick your nose in my butt, dude, now. And I go, no, Bob, no. And then he would time it out to where he would like coach me like when he was letting out his fart and he'd be like, inhale it now, bro, now. And he would spread his cheeks and fart directly. He would fart directly into my nose. I never told you that. Well, we could edit that out. Let's edit it back in. Because can I, can I tell you? This, no, let's, no, 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 let's talk. Steve. Let's edit that out. No, let's edit it back in. Can, oh I, can we talk about this? Listen to me, please, brother. You don't realize what you just told me and our sister siblings. What? You told us the origin story of why you're obsessed with weird smells. Are you doing like I'm Freudian not, psychology? I'm not what at are you doing? All. What are you're you doing? You're obsessed with it because you love your brother, and at a young age, he was introducing horrible smells to you. It's so, a real thing, dude. No, that's not no Carl it's Jung. What are thing. you doing? What are you doing? No, it's a real thing. So this stems from my childhood. Dude, he, he made you put your nose in his butt. Dude. In his anus. In his anus. And he would fart on command. In my nose. And that's why you have an obsession with weird smells oh and stuff. Oh my god. Your brother Bobby did this to you, dude. This is a big revelation. Holy smokes. It really is. He did. Huh? Yeah. It trend, you know what's weird is because even when I started wrestling, I would I would get so nervous, I would bite my thumbs like till what are they became look look at my thumbs. Yeah. But they were way worse when I was a kid. And it wasn't the biting, it was like the saliva onto the Fixation. skin and then I would smell like the rotten saliva oh, thing on my thumbs. Ugh. So it it progressed over the years. Yeah. Good for you, man. What's up, man? Let's go back to because I, I, th I find this fascinating since we haven't spent this much time in like a room together. Yeah. What other things did we notice about each other? Um, uh, well, talking about going back to your masturbation thing, uh, <laughs> Steve, uh, shh, yeah, you, um, there's a couple. Wait, wait, why? To think about what you're about to say, just think about it. Thinking about really think about, really think about it. Then say it. Think about it. Um, I might have Repercussions. seen. I might have say. seen. Uh, you were talking about how horny you were, and I looked over a couple times, and it was the beginning of a chub. Well, <gasps> it was the beginning of a chub. You were like because we were out on the strip. And we think seeing, about it. We were seeing different ladies and stuff like that, and you know. We were talking about our night, and and Steve was like, "I haven't tripped on in so long." And then well, I was a lot. I I confess to you, one of the nights, I was literally beginning to jerk off under the sheets. While while I was asleep. While you're in the bed next to me. If you would have confessed that to me that you completed, I would have been like, "No, that I could not have done that." So what went through your mind? Like you're starting to jerk off, and then what? What I did. I head? might have done like. How many tugs? And this, keep in mind, I need a whole like masturbation kit at home, like with my with my latex gloves and my aloe vera Vaseline lotion. Sure. So this is just dry hand. Yeah. That's when you know. I'm like, no, you know what? Dry hand. And I start. I might have done seven strokes, and then I felt guilty. I'm like, you know what? God, dude, Jeremiah's right. And I stop myself, brother, out of respect. That's true. That's, that's true respect right there. Yeah. Out of respect, bro. Thank you, brother. But I kind of felt like that spawned... Because I get... The wheels tur start turning with me, too. You're on, like... You get ten ideas, but sometimes I might come up with one or two. You fixate on the one or two. And I'm like... And I fixate on I'm like, wait a minute. Because I'm like, because you said content, right? We want to get content. Sure. So I'm like, what if we do, because I was, I was literally had my hand on my penis under the sheets. And I'm like, wait a minute. 
this is a way, because you're not showing anything. What if they do a jerk-off challenge? And you're opposed to that. Why? Tell me a reason. I think that if we do that for sure... I wanted to do it badly. We will, we might, there's a chance we might get pulled from YouTube. But why? We're because, not showing anything. Because you think it's a gag. Do you think okay? Do you think Target really wants to show an ad after we're we're coming underneath sheets in a hotel room? We're not showing anything. I know, it could be a joke. But we're literally orgasming our. <laughs> but we're not showing that either. We would show our faces if that happened. No, it's literally because I thought about camera angles. We would have set the cameras on that nightstand where the TV is. Yeah. One pointing towards you, one pointing towards me. We're both underneath, completely underneath the bed sheets, okay? Right. And it's us like, we're counting down five, four, three, two, one. And then we just have at it, we have um, washed towels, cloths, like near. To capture it. No, 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 on our stomachs. But like, yeah, they're not to, seeing any I of know, it. to capture it. To capture it. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Um, this is a sign because, like, you're not seeing this, but there's a, a truck that says oversized <laughs> load. This is meant to be. Right I'm ahead. That on the next topic, we there there have been. You um, gotta turn this around. This is too funny. There's literally an oversized load while we're talking about and that, this. That's I a mean, sign. The, just and boy, because the next topic, because I forgot about this. This whole weekend has been like the movie Signs. Let's talk about it. Okay. There was a think lot Think about of, it. I am going to think about it. How has this been like the movie Signs all weekend? Because it all stemmed from when we won, um, it, it, it was after we won. Oh, we the, did some weird things. Yeah, we did ritualistic weird we things. We did some OCD kind of things. OCD. Before uh, we, we won that we didn't capture uh, yeah, in that them, other Yeah, tell them what we did. Before, after we, we got the money uh, and we were about to put it all in black on the roulette table. Yeah. We put our foreheads, our foreheads on a marble headstone. It was like a one of those... Uh, it, was block, a, it was like a pillar. Those block pillars. Or like a block pillar. It was like a cement block pillar or marble and, or whatever. And, and I said, like, put your forehead on it. And I instructed you. Yeah. You I say, instructed say clear, you. you say clear your mind. I said, clear your mind. Think positive and think black. Mm -hmm. All on black. Mm -hmm. and, and I I did. I cleared my mind and I only saw black. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and you noticed that when uh, when it was basically uh, spinning around the roulette thing, is that I uh, after the guy like was like no more bets. I was combating his his swipe with scissors before. See, that was a weird thing. You that was your choice. Yeah. I thought you were just doing scissors, but it was an energy. You did like a Jedi. I, it was me taking the Obi Wan back. Kenobi like deference yeah or de uh, like you did a jedi obi-wan kenobi like like deflection with the scissors that was like a scissor jedi a little bit above padawan skill level like jedi yeah. like you learned that in the deck of a system like luke like yoda taught luke and luke told you hey there's this jedi move that you could do to because he was the sith lord he was a nice guy, but he was a Sith Lord to us. Of course. Because that was blood money to me. Yeah. But another sign was, because what did I keep telling you? It, it, we were just in Sin City, and I was captivated, and I thought I was getting addicted, because I kept saying, hey, can we hit the slot? We had already won we the already money, won that money, but I kept it. What did I keep saying? Can we just go back for I was like, Steve, this is how Vegas gets us. This is literally the classic tale of everybody in Vegas. If they win, they're feeling good, and then they go back. So but, we kept resisting. But this is another sign that I'm remembering. So after that, after that last show last night, I kept bringing it up, and we're loading the stuff in your car, and there's like 
a back and lot. And we, I, we kid you not, a black cat, a big black cat. Big black cat. You know, and, you know, like superstition, black cats, bad luck, you know, like, like Halloween and all that, ran past us. And then we both acknowledged it and uh, were like, oh no. That's not a sign, I don't know what That's it is. That's a sign. Yeah. Do you remember any other signs? That's. Uh, oh, another sign? Yeah. I forgot that Steve told me this. That he had identity theft at Harris, and I randomly parked at Harris, and I was like, "Oh, this is another sign that we're not supposed to be gambling tonight." That was the final sign where I was like, "Oh, we're not going to win anything tonight." And we didn't. And we didn't. And but Steve did challenge me. This is the challenge for this week. I know these challenges on the road are, are this like, is spontaneous. This is kind of a spontaneous one. Steve challenged me. He, uh, I brought my little uh, soprano saxophone with me. And like, do you think you could actually make money busking? I go, oh, is that the name of it? Busking, yeah. Okay. It's basically you're playing for tips or playing for uh, for money uh, or donations or whatever. Yeah. Steve found an empty cup that either had beer or piss at the bottom of it. And that dude, let me tell you something. That was a sign. What? Dude, a, a random cup. Yeah. Yeah, another Just, sign. That was ready and, to go. And then my mind's like, oh, you could stand because I came up with this idea too. Because you were on the ground level. By the way, there's a lot of traffic, foot traffic. But my idea was, oh, there's a cup, and that's your stage. Sit, stand on that platform. Continue. So, uh, Steve challenged me to basically do a bus challenge, and uh, and let's cut to what happened. And uh, we may have even gotten recognized in the process. You think so? already. <laughs> Look at that, dude. You do what you do, man. Oh, wow. I appreciate you, Thank you so much money you made. <laughs> this is insane. It was an experiment. Look at this, dude. Go. It's insane. Go, my friend. We did it, dude. That was that was awesome to witness, man. I'm proud that you. I'm proud that you had the endurance to, because there was a lot of factors. There's a, 
you know, like a lot of drunkenness around you and the sure. energy was just party vibe. Oh yeah. But you like, you committed and you, you're in the pocket. Yeah, you used to say in the pocket, you're putting yourself out there when, when. And I'm so proud, it shocked me. You made like eight to nine dollars. Yeah, we made seven dollars in ones and then uh, some change and Steve was nice. And I want to apologize. But but Steve gave the change to a homeless guy because he's a nice oh, guy. You have to say that. No, well, but you're a nice guy. We took the cup money yeah. that was left over from that wasn't bills, and he gave it to a homeless guy. All right, That's but kind then, of guy Steve but, then is. but then I turned into a bad guy right after that. You might have. <laughs> <laughs> you might have. The devil was on my shoulder, brother. This is what Steve does. The devil, go ahead, go ahead and tell the him. demon was on my shoulder blade. You go, hey, hey, that's seven dollars you just won. I mean, technically, that's free money. And first of all, I go, what? I just, I just worked for that. I, but, I know, but in my defense, I thought, well, you know, we, that's something because it happened so quick. You know, it happened with Scissor Bros because of the challenge. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? In my mind, because I knew. If I presented it, like, came out of pocket, like, with our winnings, you'd be like, no, Steve, you, you, you know, you promised me we would stop gambling. But that was my angle. I'm like, but you know what? That doesn't count. That's street, that street money you just made, bro. Yeah. And so we are right by Flamingos. Yep. Shout out to Flamingos. Shout out. They need the love. So we're in Flamingos. And I, and I also, this was a manipulative on my part, because I kind of tricked you. You what? go, because you, you're like, why are, we, why are we walking in here? And I'm like, hey, let's just, let's just walk around and check it out. Wait, so you knew what you were doing that? I whole think time? I did. Yeah, I go because I'm like, my mind was on the the, 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 the it was calling me. Of course it was. So I kind of tricked you. I go, because there's no reason why we would walk in. I mean, you're just coming down from the high of performing. Yep. But I'm like, hey, dude, let, let's just walk in there, bro. Let's just walk in. And I'm amped because I just did a couple shows. Yeah, you don't know what I was doing. I just, I got re-adrenaline rush from making a little bit of money from that I busking know. challenge. I, 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 that was manipulative in my, on my part, and I bit, apologize. No, 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 it's okay. But I'm like, hey, let's keep walking. Let's keep walking because I knew, I'm like, the further, because I just needed to see one of those beautiful machines. You want to see those lights and the yeah, sounds. Yeah, and, and then I think I present, I opened the doorway because I'm like, hey, dollar slots, quarter slots. Yeah, it got depressing real fast. Go ahead, you continue. Uh, basically, uh, we went to the dollar slots and um, we just started losing immediately. I mean, we lost that seven dollars so fast. And Here's some clips of that. I'm so sorry. I promised you we won't gamble. We're here at Flamingo. That's what I'm sorry. I just worked really hard um, for that $7. I'm so sorry. And Steve made us gamble it away. And it could have gone to milkshakes, but... <laughs> Let's get out of here. We gotta get out of Vegas. That's a valuable lesson. Quit while you're ahead. That's the lesson. Yeah, so we had a pretty different experience from our winning the night before, and that's why I capped it as that seven. It's like, we got to get out. So we got out of there, but something that happened that I want to bring up uh, before uh, when we were on our way to walking towards the Flamingo, just walking towards the Strip, before the busing and everything, just let you guys know, Steve got recognized a lot in Vegas. Dude, well. cut that out. Timestamp that for sure. Up, Go ahead, man. Yo, we just ran. What's in your name, brother? Benjamin. We Benjamin? just ran into Benjamin. He was at the show last night, yeah. and he just said, "What's up?" He said, "Yo, Scissor Brother." Yeah, and brother. yes, scissor, sir. Scissor. We're, we're we're in Baker right now, right? Yeah, yeah, you man, live yeah. around here? Yeah, I'm in Vegas, man. You're in oh, Vegas. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome, so man. Much Hell fun, yeah. guys. Can't see Dude, thanks for coming and supporting him, brother. Dude, so thank fun. you for being there last night, brother. Hell yeah. Nice to see you guys next time. Man. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Man. Have a great day, brother. Scissor Bros for life. Yes, sir. Okay, man. See you, man. What you saying, dude? Time stamp that out for I'm sure, my man. People stopped him multiple times. It was cool for me to see. And then he's like, then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm here with Jeremiah. Then they were like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, Jeremiah, what's up? But no, like, Steve was like dude. a recognizable guy. No. 
Yeah, man, it was cool. It was, I was happy for you. But this sister brother. particular scenario kind of tripped me out. So we're literally walking by and the parking lot. This uh, this nice looking woman pulls up in a car and she goes, "Hey, what's your name?" And then Steve goes, "Um, Steve." <laughs> And she goes, Stevie Wee. All right, dude, cut she, that out. No, she goes, she goes, she goes, she goes. Can I take a picture? And, oh, and, and, I want to be friendly. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. She goes, yeah, Steve, it's okay. Cool. Yeah. She parks her car. She just revs she to the right. Goes to the right, gets out of the car, and she gets out of the car. And, and boy, was she wearing like she was wearing some kind of prom dress. It was some kind of high dress. heel. It was, she was all done up and, and everything. And she had, do you notice like she had this certain fragrance too? I didn't notice that. Oh. <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> okay, I'll cut back. I'll cut that out. I'll cut back. Cut, there's a fragrance. If you go, have you, if you've been to, the reason why you don't know is because it's prevalent in strip clubs. It's this certain perfume or powder. To hook people in. It's a specific kind of smell. And I noticed that. It was faint. Okay. So I noticed her attire and I'm like, but I didn't, I wasn't putting it together, the pieces together. So when she gets out of the car, um, and, and it's, and she's like, oh, I And take we're, we all took a picture. We, we all were all because, in it. Yeah, because she goes, because uh, yeah. she goes, hey guys. And, and she's like, yeah, I'm here Jeremiah. And then like, and it's then like it she snapped out of it. She saw me too. Yeah, and then and, she goes, and, she, oh. and she does this thing where like, is she, was she going to hug me? I, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I, I couldn't Because I was witnessing it. And she, I was just trying to be respectful. She was lunging in for either a handshake and, 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 or a hug. <laughs> But you that just like stood and stared at her. I, did, I just go, hello. Yeah. I go, hi. I didn't know if she, I have no idea. Yeah, but anyway, there. I was like, okay. She was, she was nice though. And yeah. uh, so she takes a picture of the two of us. And Steve goes, oh, what was the question you asked her? I go, so what do you, I said like, what do you, because it was like two, it was like getting late, right? She was by herself. I'm like, what are you, like, what are you doing up? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, like, what are you? What are you doing up this late? And she was by herself, and yeah, and or something, or we must ask her like, so what do you what do you do like, sure, or something like that. And her response, and I didn't know this terminology. I had to look it up. I had to Google up at the hotel room. She said, "I'm a lady of the night." Just bluntly, just said it, and it caught Steve. And yeah, I and like, I didn't know what that meant. Steve, but you knew what that meant. Well, yeah, I got real dramatic with Steve, like. Because when she left, she was very sweet, and we said goodbye, and uh, she took off. And Steve goes, "What is, a, what is a lady of the night?" And I go, "Come on, man, you gotta be kidding." I did not know, and he didn't know, and I got real aggressive with Steve. I go, "Oh, you want to know?" Yeah, it means, oh, <laughs> and he said, "It's a hooker. It's dude. a hooker. It's a prostitute. And, uh, That's what a lady of the night is." And I did it for you know, just yeah. leaning into it, and then I'm like. I was like, but she's very nice. She's a very sweet lady. And then it boggled my mind because a lot was kind of like my wheels were turning. And I, I thought, because because she said another thing. She goes, I love, keep up the good content. Go, she said that to us. She said, keep up the good content. And that's something very specific to Stevie Weeby. Yeah. He's always go, making that great content, good content. And then I go, and it made me think of this. This is the thought that I had at the moment, during the moment. I go, oh, I, I don't really know who's watching the content. We never know. Like the demographic? Or... And we appreciate all our sisters yeah, and we appreciate there who it. are watching, we don't know. liking, commenting, subscribing. I don't know. All that stuff helps, man. We appreciate it, but we don't know. But you never know who's watching the show. Yeah. Can you come up with a little jingle? I think the two of us did, and that's how we're going to close out this episode, my friend. Okay, how does it go? And I'll just... You, you came up with the melody, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, this is our closing song. Okay. It's called Lady of the Night. <laughs> Lady of the Night. Lady of the Night. Lady of the Night. She loves all our content. She's the Lady of the Night. Lady of the Night. Lady of the Night. She loves all our content. Stevie Weeby didn't know 
What a lady of the night was. I look it up. And then me, a man, prostitute. Lady of the night. Lady of the night. Lady of the night. She loves all our content. Steve smelled pheromones coming off this woman. Jeremiah didn't know what was the smell. Cause he's Lady. never been in the strip club in his life. Maybe because he is married to a beautiful wife. Lady of the night. Lady of the night. Lady of the night. And she loves all our content. YouTube.com slash Sister Bros. Thank you for watching, liking and commenting. Patreon.com slash Sister Bros. Exclusive content that you might not see on this channel. We love you. Thank you for making this one of my favorite trips on the road ever. That was a great trip, brother. That's great. Thanks again for inviting me. I love you, man. Thank I love you, man. That was great. Cut. That was so fun, man. Now, my concern now, because we're done, there's no way I'm not going to have this. Yeah. What if she watches? We didn't say her name. We weren't disparaging to her. She was very sweet. Um... And we, we didn't say anything bad about her, but that's very sweet of you to even look out for her. But there's no possible way for people to know her identity. Okay. We didn't say anything mean or anything. No? No. It won't hurt our feelings? No. Thanks for tuning in. Lady of the night, lady of the night, lady of the night. She loves all our content. Lady of the night, lady of the night, lady of the night. And she loves all our content. Oh, did we show the dance break of jumping from bed to bed? Let's cut to that right now. That's how we'll it. close the episode. Hey, Steve. Hey, what? I forgot the music. Can I add it in later? No problem, buddy. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> are you are you joining us at home? I hope you are. Don't try this at home. My can hurt. I'm going to catch you. Okay. <laughs> it's the hotel dance break. If you're not dancing along with us, we hope you, we hope you are. All right. All right. What are we getting? We're getting good old alien fresh beef jerky. Yeah, we saw it on a Southwest boat. hot beef jerky and pep pepper teriyaki beef jerky. We saw it on a billboard on the way here and we figured we'd stop. Pretty cool. Ooh, I like that sign, that old school cashier sign. I'm looking then, forward to this. A little coconut water? Yeah, I love it. Nice. It's the Zoltar machine um, from One of my favorite from movies. Big. Big. Starring Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. I want to be big. <laughs> it's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello? Is anybody still there? It's your pal, Gerald, and big surprise, I wasn't in the car with him on the way to Vegas or on the way back. It's all good. It happens. What are you going to do? Go fuck myself, right? Whoops. 
Didn't mean to say that out loud. Uh, had a crazy week. Did some cocaine with an anteater. They definitely took more than I thought they were going to, but so life is. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the challenge okay. It's one of those situations where, you know, the guys say they're on the road and it is a little bit more difficult to do that kind of stuff in the mobile way of thinking, but you can email us challenge ideas for the road at scissorprospod at gmail.com if you've got some better ideas for something they could do in the car or while they're traveling but anywho i love you guys i hope you have a good week and i'm doing all right i'm hanging in there we love you and we'll talk to you soon bye oh shit i almost forgot jeremiah has a new special called stand up on the spot that you can watch free now on youtube with a bunch of great comics on it and it's just shows he's been doing around L.A. for like 11 years. So you're going to love it. Okay. It's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning. It's a Red Bull morning. <laughs> Red Bull morning. <laughs>